we had discussed regarding the drug dalamanid its mechanism of action inclusion criteria exclusion criteria who recommendation today we'll be discussing regarding its pre treatment evaluation dosage and its adverse events welcome to my channel my name mohammad hafiz we'll be, uh, regarding the pre treatment evaluation of the drug dalamanid we'll be taking a detailed history any history of past history of att as well as uh, the liver function test baseline and ecg which is very important to rule out any qt prolongation and serum electrolytes the major abnormalities being serum potassium magnesium and calcium which is uh, involved in qt prolongation as well as the serum albumin level before you start patients on dalamanid treatment all patients require counseling especially the female patients on family planning or culture isolates they will be stored and drug susceptibility test will be performed at baseline and follow up this is a table which is taken from the pmdt guidelines of 2021 which shows the treatment algorithm for the drug resistant tb the patients diagnosed of mdr tb and who started on longer regimen and when there is contraindication for the shorter or shorter oral bedaquilin containing regimen or longer regimen contains of five drugs and if there is any contraindication for the use of these drugs due to intolerance resistance dalamanid is the first drug of choice so how do you initiate the treatment dalamanid is the first in line in replacement sequence of the longer oral mdr regimen so once you start all patients will be managed in the inpatient setting for a period of 2 weeks to observe for the tolerance then after discharge the treatment will be continued on ambulatory basis with strict adherence to treatment and follow up coming to the dosage and regimen dalamanid is used as 50 mg for 24 weeks in 6 to 11 years of age and those more than 12 years of age it's 100 mg bd and uh, both is for 24 weeks so how do you manage patients with missed doses if the patient misses one or two doses up to a maximum of one month you can continue the dose however if there is interruption of one month or more they will be declared as lost to follow up and the patient will not be considered for administration of dalamanid anymore it's to be noted that combined use of bedaquilin and uh, dalamanid is recommended for those mdr or xdr tb patient when an appropriate regimen cannot be designed using all the five drugs from group a and b the duration of the drug is limited to 6 months however you can extend it in patients whom an effective regimen cannot be designed supply chain management once you start the patient on dalamanid containing regimen it's to be ensured that the entire course of the treatment is secured for the patient and dalamanid is provided with other second line drugs for a period of 24 weeks which is supplied on monthly basis and each box contains 48 tablets the adverse events of dalamanid the most common are nausea vomiting and dizziness another side effect which is of concern is the qtc interval prolongation which can cause torsadic point is sudden death or ventricular arrhythmia the it should be noted that treatment should not be started if a qtc interval is more than 500 milliseconds and if possible avoid other qt prolonging drugs and ecg should be done at least weekly throughout the dalamanid course if other qt prolonging drugs are added like fluoroquinolones if it's in the regimen This is the ECG which shows a QTC prolongation. Normal QTC interval is less than 440 milliseconds. This one big box is 0.2 seconds. So what to do when the patient is on dalamanid and having cardiac rhythm disturbance? If there is grade one and grade two, grade one asymptomatic and grade two also asymptomatic with a transient rhythm abnormality which doesn't require any treatment, you can continue dalamanid and he should be evaluated. closely however grade 3 and grade 4 who is having recurrent persistent symptomatic arrhythmia grade 4 which is unstable uh, dysarrhythmia which requires hospitalization you stop dalamanid this is the table which shows the qtc interval on ecg and the action that needs to be taken when the patient is on dalamanid normal as i told is less than 440 so when is it considered prolonged if it is considered more than 440 
and uh, there is no need of action until it reaches more than 450 in males and 470 in milliseconds in females. If uh, QTC interval is less in between 450 to 480, you rule out other causes of uh, prolonged QTC before deciding to withhold dilaminate. If you find that QTC interval is more than 4, 480, you repeat ECG, check for electrolytes, withhold dilaminate until the electrolytes have normalized. However, if you know that electrolytes are normalized and the QTC interval is between 480 and 500 and patient is stable and the electrolytes are normal, you repeat weekly ECG to confirm that QTC interval is stable. If QTC interval is more than 500, there is no other choice. You discontinue delaminate and all other QTC prolonging drugs. Another adverse event which is of concern is the gastrointestinal system disorder. If the patient is having grade 4 elevation of GI parameters, he should be hospitalized and monitored closely. And if the patient is having nausea or grade 4 vomiting, the patient's treatment of delaminate it should be discussed with the DRTB center. Coming to the other adverse events and other toxicities, if the grade is between grade 1 and 2, you can continue delaminate. However, if it is grade 3 and 4, you, can discont you should discontinue delaminate. So we have come to the end of this topic. We, uh, in my part 1 section, I had discussed regarding the mechanism of action, inclusion, exclusion criteria, WHO recommendation. And in our this section, we have uh, finished with the pretreatment evaluation, dosage, adverse events and the QTC prolongation. So we have uh, completed all regarding the drug delaminate. Thank you.